Once you've marked your song books to 498, I want to encourage you to open your Bibles. And uh, I want us to take a thought from the book of Psalms to tie in with the scripture reading this morning. The book of Psalms, chapter 5, and in verse 3 of that psalm, the psalmist writes something very interesting regarding the morning. And in, in Psalm 5, verse 3, the psalmist says, O Lord, in the morning you hear my voice. In the morning I prepare sacrifice for you and watch. For you are not a God who delights in wickedness. Evil may not dwell with you. The boastful shall not stand before your eyes. You hate all evildoers. You destroy those who speak lies. The Lord abhors the bloodthirsty and deceitful man. Think about that in conjunction with what Steve read from Ephesians chapter 4. In Ephesians chapter 4, the bottom of that chapter, the Apostle Paul is, is encouraging us to set aside ways that are false ways, ways that are wicked. He says in verse 25, Therefore, having put away falsehood, let each, of you, each one of you speak the truth with his neighbor. He goes on about attributes that a Christian should have. I want us to think about attributes like what Paul says. He says, be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath. He talks about not giving opportunity to Satan. And in verse 25, he says, let the thief no longer steal, but let him, let, let him but rather let him labor doing honest work with his own hands. In verse 29, he talks about not allowing corruptness to come out of our mouths. And he talks about that what our speech should be, should be with grace. So that those who hear it might glorify God. He also talks in, that, in this chapter about putting away malice and wrath. I want you to think about these things every morning as we rise. Every morning as we get up is a new day. I want us to think about that. And I want us to think about, we get dressed every day, right? I hope we do. Now, now my kids, we dressed them in church clothes last night so that they would be more ready. So they didn't get dressed this morning. But as a general rule of thumb, we get up, we get dressed each day. Let's think about every day beginning our lives new with Christ. Growing up, we milked cows. I think Roy can probably relate to this. Now, I don't know what time you grew up milking Roy, but we milked at 4 a.m. and 4 p.m. And my mother was a real stickler for getting up and milking cows in the, the, the darkest hour just before the sun rises. And, and, and growing up, I saw all those daybreaks. And daybreak gives us an opportunity to see life begin. To hear the birds chirping in the trees. To feel the earth come alive. Okay? And so I want us to think every morning we should come alive for Christ. The next time you see a sunrise, think of the joy that God felt when he said in Genesis chapter 1 and verse 3, let there be light. The beginning of life was light. Now, light is important. In John chapter 8 and verse 12, Jesus is referred to as the light of the world. In fact, John says that there is no darkness in him. Also thinking in, as Christians, God calls us to walk in light. Let's go back into Isaiah chapter 2 for just a moment this morning and take a, take a lesson from Isaiah. In Isaiah's prophecy, Isaiah is encouraging Israel to be the light. We as Christians today should be light in Christ. Isaiah chapter 2, and down in verse 5 of Isaiah chapter 2, Isaiah says, O house of Jacob, come. Let us walk in the light of the Lord. 
if we if Jesus is the light of the world and we are walking in him then we are walking in that light and John also refers to us as a city that is set on a hill that cannot be hid we may be uh, we may meet in a very small building tucked away between houses on the upper part of 2nd Street in Marietta. But friends, when we leave this place, each one of us individually shines forth as a light. Let's be the dawn, the beginning of a new day within the communities in which we live. As we gaze upon a sunrise, we realize that yesterday is gone. Darkness has vanished. Likewise, in our spiritual lives, we begin each day with yesterday behind us. And we begin each new day with all of that darkness, pain, bitterness. It can all be released as we lay in bed and let go of yesterday. And we can begin each day as a new day. To borrow the term from Anne of Green Gables, I'm losing my train of thought with the, with the quote, but it's something to the beginning of, help me Kate, every, every, every day is new, or fresh, fresh, with no mistakes, yes. Every day is fresh with no mistakes. I should have written it on the slide so that I would remember that. The Apostle Paul in Ephesians chapter 3, or not Ephesians, Philippians, sorry, Philippians chapter 3, and in verse 4 through 9 makes a statement. Paul says, Though I myself have reason for confidence in the flesh, if anyone else thinks he has reason for confidence in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised the eighth day of the people of Israel, the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews, as to the law, a Pharisee as to zeal, a persecutor of the church as to righteousness under the law, blameless. Now think about this. This is Paul's past. He had zeal, he had confidence, but it was misplaced. But notice verse 7, he says, But whatever gain I had, I count as loss for the sake of Christ. Indeed, I count everything as loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Jesus Christ, my Lord. For his sake I have suffered loss of all things, and count them as rubbish, in order that I may gain Christ, and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which comes through faith in Christ. The righteousness from God that depends on faith, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and, that, and may share his sufferings, becoming like him in death, that by any means possible I may attain the resurrection of the dead. This is what Paul began each day with. A realization of what his faith was. The end of the day is the beginning of a cleansing period. At the close of each day, we can lay aside the burdens that we have each day. Steve read in our scripture reading from Ephesians chapter 4, he, he read a section here in verse 25 says, therefore, having put away all falsehoods every day, at the close of every day, if we as Christians would put away any falsehoods, the day has brought our direction. In the morning, we can speak the truth with our neighbor. Because as falsehoods, we can put those aside and we can lay them aside. Why? Because we are members of one another. We're also members of Christ. Notice verse 26, he says, be angry and sin not. Do not let the sun go down on your anger. Now, very, very good. Excellent advice of the Apostle Paul. 
instructing us to lay aside our anger, the frustrations, release those during the night so that we can begin each day new and fresh. In verse 27, he says, and give no opportunity to the devil. When we begin each day afresh, we give no opportunity to Satan. We begin each day with God, we give no opportunity to Satan. In, in, in the book of Lamentations, Lamentations chapter 3, uh, we're re we are reminded that God's love and his mercies are new every morning. Think about what Jeremiah is trying to get across here. The idea that God's love and mercies are new every morning. So again, I want us to think about that fresh beginning every morning. Coming to life every morning. Every time we get up, rededicate ourselves to God. My wife has, for a long time, spent time in prayer, time in the scriptures every morning. It's part of what she does that helps her to remain sane with all the children. And it reminds her of how her attitude should be. And I think it's a wonderful thing to do to remember those things. So in, in Lamentations chapter 3 and verse 22 says... The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I will hope in him. The idea that all of God's love is new. You know, as a parent, sometimes we get worn out and frustrated by the end of the day. Dealing with children. Well, God's the same way. I'm sure that God gets tired of dealing with me at the end of every day. But here in Lamentations, I'm reminded that it is new every morning. As we set a new day, let's set our affections on things above. Let's focus on the things, the accomplishments, the achievements that we need to have in our daily lives. The Apostle Paul's letter to the Colossian Christians in Colossians chapter 3 and verse 2, Paul reminds them, and he says, set your minds, King James Version will say affections, set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on the earth, for you have died and your life is hid with Christ in God. So we set our affections every morning. If we set our affections on Christ, we'll begin life new day. And thinking about that newness every day. Being born again should not be a one-time experience. Now this might be a new concept, so if you don't look at me that. But being born again should be something that we experience every day as a Christian. Being born again should not be something that we experience only when we come up out of the waters of baptism. Realizing that each day we have the opportunity to be born again. You know, Peter writes this to Christians in 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 22. And I think this is so interesting. He says, having purified your souls by your obedience to the truth for a sincere brotherly love, love one another earnestly from a pure heart. Since you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable through the living and abiding word of God. Peter wants us to remember that feeling. He wants us to remember that experience. And he wants us to live that experience. Because we are not born of perishable seed. If it were perishable seed, if we were born again once, it was that was it. It was a perishable seed, it would fade away. 
We're not born again just once. We are born again every day of our lives after that obedience to the will of God. For the Christian, each day has the opportunity to begin again. Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 1 through 4 says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which clings so closely, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking, looking this way. He says, looking to Jesus. Looking to Jesus. The founder and perfecter, or the King James Version will say, the author and finisher of our faith. Who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despised him with shame, and is seated, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. Again, we begin each day looking to Christ. Each new day can bring renewed strength, renewed energy. We sleep because we're tired. We sleep because we are worn out. There is, there is an opportunity to rest. There's an opportunity to set that aside. In Philippians chapter 4 in verse 13. Paul says, I can do all things through him who strengthens me. We can begin each day. Some days I wake up groggy. Sometimes I don't want to get out of bed. Sometimes I have to remind myself that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. We can begin each day with confidence. You think it's any accident that the Lord wanted us to worship on the first day of the week? It's like a new beginning every week. We get to start that week fresh. We get to start that week with confidence. Just as we start every morning fresh. Every morning with confidence. We don't close out an old week. We begin a new one. We begin a new week confident in Christ. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, and in verse 7, Paul says, For we walk by faith and not by sight. He reminds us that we don't know what each day is going to bring. We don't know what each week is going to bring. But we walk it by faith. Confident. We are confident in God's everlasting love. We are confident in His Word. We are confident that with his strength we will endure. In the book of 1 John, at the end of John's book, in chapter 5, John begins this final chapter, closing out this, this wonderful letter by saying, everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has been born of God, and everyone who loves the Father loves whoever has been born of him. By this we know that we are, love the children of God when we love God and obey his commandments. For this is the love of God that we keep his commandments and his commandments are not burdensome. For everyone who has been born of God overcomes the world and this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. Who is it that overcomes the world except the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. Even our faith. So we wrap this morning's lesson up. I want you to turn with me to Romans chapter 1. And consider this as you face each new day. I find this incredibly encouraging. To repeat every morning that I can the words of the Apostle Paul. In Romans chapter 1 and in verse 16, the Apostle Paul says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God to salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jew first, and also to the Greek. For in it the righteousness of God is revealed from faith for faith. As it is written, the righteous shall live by faith. So I hope that every morning this week, you will think about the opportunity 
of new life each day. The opportunity to live each day as if you were born again. The opportunity to live each day as if today you first received salvation. And if we do that, then we, the world is going to see us. And the world is going to know that we are Christians. Because each day is spatial and each day we live for Christ as if it was the first day we were living for him. Should there be anyone subject this morning to the invitation, maybe you've never put on Christ in baptism. Maybe you've never been born again. Maybe you've never experienced what it's like to have that burden lifted from your soul. We get an opportunity. The opportunity is always open. 24-7, the opportunity is there. We offer an opportunity at every close of every service because it's a time to meditate. It is a time to think. It is a time for us to consider where we are. Should there be anyone subject to that invitation today, I would like to encourage you to make your wants and wishes known as we sing 400. 98 and think of home and faith. Oh, think of the home.